checklist and also we have seen a basic program like how to use data types and how to use uh, operators and all and today we'll discuss a few more topics from java so the first thing we are going to discuss about uh, control statements control statements in java so control statements in the sense we have uh, conditional statements and also we have looping statements and also jumping statements so these are all comes under the control statements because these statements will control the uh, these statements will control the execution okay so control statements in the sense we have conditional statements and uh, we have looping statements and then jumping statements so these are all different categories of control statements in java so under conditional statements under conditional statements we have if else and switch case statement these are also called as a selection statements so conditional statements are also called as a selection statements right so under selection statements we have a two categories again if else condition and switch case condition and the looping statements also called as a iterative statements iterative statements under this while loop do while loop or loop these are three uh, statements comes under iteration statements and break and continue comes under jumping statements so these are all called control statement because these statements will control the execution of your program so sometimes uh, what happens is you have 10 lines of code and certain lines of code you have to execute based upon certain condition if the condition is true you have to execute so some set of lines or if the condition is false you have to execute another set of lines so that is one idea so in those conditions or in those situations we can go and use conditional statements and similarly there are certain situations where we have to execute the same statements multiple times or we need to execute the same set of statements repetitively so in those cases we can just go and use the looping statements okay so here we have multiple statements conditional statements or selection statements looping statements or iterative statements jumping statement so these are all multiple statements we have to control the execution of your script or code now let us see one by one so the first i'll talk about conditional statements conditional statements so under conditional statements we have two statements if else condition switch case statement so let's see how to use these conditional statements one by one with examples so first of all I have a problem statement like this. I want to find out a number is even number or odd number. So through programmatically, I want to find out a number is even number or odd number. So how we can find out? So first of all, we need to clear about the logic and then we can put that into programming way. So first, how we can say whether even number or odd number? So logically, if you want to say a number is even number or odd number, that number divided by two, if it is produces zero as a reminder, then that number is an even number. Or any number which is divided by two, which is produced one as a reminder, that is an odd number. So this is a logic we need to implement. And how we can use this conditional statement to check this condition. A number is divided by two equal to zero. We have to print it is an even number. Or if a number is divided by two, it produces other than zero, that is a odd number. So how we can put that into condition? So this is a condition actually. So to do this, we have to use a conditional statement. So the syntax of if else statement will be like this. If in the bracket, we should say some condition. If this condition is true, then set of block uh, block of statements will be executed. So the statements we have to insert here. These are the number of statements. Or you can have one statement or multiple statements. And if this condition is true, then these set of statements will be executed. Or if the condition is false, then another set of statements will be executed. So here, this is called as a if block. And this is called as a else block. If the condition is true, if block will execute. And if the condition is false, else block will execute. So this is a syntax of if else statement. Okay. So by using this if else statement, we'll see how we can find out a number is even number or odd number. 
so let's go to eclipse and uh, this is our project we have created earlier and every day i will create a new package inside this project okay so in yesterday all examples i have created under default package because we don't create any package so by default these classes are comes under the default package and uh, package i will create so package in the sense it's a simple like a folder okay so let me just create another package under src so right click new package so here you need to give the package name i'll just say day three finish okay so this is the empty package currently i don't have any classes inside this package so right click on this new class and here i'm going to create a new class called event or odd number main method then finish it so now we got the main method so inside this we need to verify so my check uh, my problem statement is i need to find out a number is even number or odd number so first of all let is initialize a number so integer number is equal to let's say 10 here and we can also take this input from the user okay so we have a scanner of methods available so i'll discuss them in the coming sessions so for now i'm just uh, adding the value directly inside the code okay and with this value we can also dynamically get from the user at the runtime we can provide these values all right so for now i'm just adding a number variable integer number is equal to 10 and then i want to find out whether this number is even number or odd number so how we can write the if condition if within the bracket so this is the syntax we should not forget so if condition if the condition is true then if block will execute if the condition is false then else block will execute and else block is optional sometimes we don't require else block only if is enough so that time you no need to specify the else block okay if this condition is false if you want to if you want to execute some other set of statements then define the else block okay otherwise we don't require else block so if here i put the condition so what is the condition here is number divided by 2 equal to 0 so this is my condition so if number is 10 10 divided by 2 equal to 0 so this condition is true as of this uh, number this condition is true now so here i will print system dot out dot in ln so number is number is even okay this is the output so you can put one statement or you can put multiple statement inside the if block so if you have only single statement you don't require these braces okay curly braces are not at all required if you have only single statement under this condition if you have multiple statements then you have to keep them in the curly braces like this and one more thing is you should not put any semicolon here okay so you should not put any semicolon for conditional statements so if you have only one statement just uh, you no need to have this curly braces and if you have multiple statements you should include them in the curly braces so this is a first condition suppose if this condition is not true suppose n divided by 2 which is producing other than 0 then this condition become false and if the condition false then i have to execute one more block called as a else block so here i will write system dot out dot print ln okay so system dot out dot print ln here i will say number is odd number okay so this is how we need to check the condition so if else condition statement we have to use like this based upon set of condition if you want to execute some set of statements and if the condition is true this statement will execute if the condition is false the else block will execute but at a time it will execute either if block or else block okay now let us uh, execute this code run as java application so now it is saying even number that means if condition is true and then this block is executed and suppose i'll change the number let's say 11 here now 11 divided by 2 which will produce 1 as a reminder so not only one other than 0 whatever it is produces the condition become false and then else block will execute so this time i am expecting number should be odd so let's run as java application so now you can see number is odd so at a time only one block of statement will execute either if condition block or else block okay so this is a simple if else statement how to use this if else statement 
to check certain condition we need to go and use if else condition okay so let's see one more example so i want to find out largest of or greatest of two numbers okay i have take i will take two numbers and the program should say which one is a greater number okay so let me just create another example new class largest of two numbers so you can just put some number also within the class in the middle you can use numbers also but the class name should not start with the number okay then main method then finish it so now i have just created largest of two numbers class so here i need to find out i uh, first of all i need to create two numbers let's say integer x is equal to 100 and other number integer y is equal to 200 so i have declared two different variables x is equal to 100 y is equal to 200 now i need to find out which one is the greatest number or which one is the largest number so logically how we can verify this if a is greater than y then x is largest or if uh, suppose if x is greater than y x is largest if not then y is largest so only one condition we need to verify here so let me just put if x equal to so double equal to is a logical operator so relational operator it will compare two numbers and the single equal to is a assignment operator so equal to will assign some value to the variable whereas double equal to will compare the values they are equal or not so x is equal to suppose uh, x greater than y i am saying condition x greater than y so x is 100 y is 200 i want to find out which one is the greater if x is greater than y when this condition becomes true if the x value is greater than y then this condition becomes true because relational operators always returns a boolean value that is true true or false so here as per the values we have sent here this condition become false if this condition true then what i should do print is i should say x is the largest number system dot out dot print ln so here i say x is largest number okay and suppose if the condition is false obviously we have another number y is largest so i can just one more condition here i can say system dot out dot print ln here i can say y is largest number okay so at the time only one condition will be true either this one true or false and if the condition is true x is largest if the condition is false else block will execute and it say y is largest now i say x is 100 y is 200 so as per my values the condition become false so it should say y is largest because y is 200 now let us run this code now we can say y is largest number and let's interchange this number let's say 200 this is 100 now it should say y x is largest okay so this is how we need to find out the largest of two numbers so for example i want to find out largest of three numbers so multiple conditions i have need to keep right so if we have a three numbers then how we can write largest of three numbers so here we need to also use uh, logical operators along with the relational operators so if you have only two numbers we can easily find out with one condition is enough but if you have a three numbers we have to compare each number with other two numbers so multiple conditions are required so when i see uh, when i want to use multiple conditions we need to use multiple if conditions and else statement let us see how we can find out the largest of three numbers so first of all let us think about the logic okay so let us say i have a three number let's say a comma b comma c or we can say x comma z y comma z so i have a three numbers so i need to find out which one is the greatest number among these three so logically if i say first let us take x value if x is greater than y and z both then obviously x is the largest x is largest number okay this is the first condition 
X should be greater than Y and also greater than Z. Then X is the largest. Similarly, let us find out Y. So take the Y value. So Y is greater than X and also greater than Z. And then Y is largest. Y is largest logically. And if X is X and Y is not largest, obviously Z is largest number. Z is largest number. Okay, here also if you want to put, you can put the condition. Z is greater than X and Y. Okay, then Z is largest number. So this is the logic behind this. So same logic we can implement in programmatically by adding multiple if conditions. So how many conditions we required? One, two. So the last one, we don't require any condition. We can put that into else block. Okay, but uh, at least two if conditions we required here. Now, let me just uh, create one more class. This time I will find out largest of three numbers. Take this class and I will say largest of three numbers. Take this main method, then finish it. So here I'll take two numbers, three numbers, integer a is equal to 10 and uh, integer b is equal to 20, integer c is equal to 30. So now I have taken three different variables which contains three different values, 10, 20, and 30. Now, the first condition is if, and here I need to verify multiple conditions. You can observe here, x greater than y, and also x greater than z, okay? Both the conditions true, then x is largest. Two conditions are involved here. But how we can write it programmatically is the first condition if if a greater than b okay a greater than b is one condition and and is a logical operator okay and a greater than c okay two conditions are kept here a greater than b and a greater than c and if both are when this and operator will return true if both the expressions or returns true then only the final condition becomes true in the previous session i have talked about this logical operators end or not so end operator will returns true if both the values are true so a greater than b should be true a greater than c also should be true and then only final value will be true if the final value will be true then only this if condition becomes executed or if condition will executes so a greater than b and a greater than c then I can see, I can say here, A is the largest number, System dot out dot print ln. I can say A is largest number. Okay, so this is the first condition. So we covered two conditions in the one, con one if condition. Now, the second step. So first step is done. So first step is done. If A greater than Y and Z, that means A greater than B and C. The next condition is, Okay, else, else, I need to check one more condition. Then use one more if statement. This is called as nested if else statement. So nested if else means we can have multiple, multiple if conditions. And in the previous example, we have only one condition, one else block. So else block will be always one, okay? But if condition can be any, any number of if conditions we can write. So if the condition is not matched or it returns false, then it will verify the another condition else else if else if we have to give some space here okay else one more condition if this time we need to verify the b b greater than a and b greater than c okay then what should happen it should print b is the largest number system dot out dot print ln here i can say b is largest number B is largest number. So this is the second condition. Even if the second condition is not true, then what else? At the finally, we have only one condition. That is C only. So here we don't need to put any other condition. So directly in else block, we can write system dot out dot print ln. Simply you can say C is largest. Okay, because how this uh, condition statement will execute means First, it will check the first condition. Okay, if the first condition is matched, then 
the first message is printed and it will ignore the rest of the conditions. Okay, here itself it will get stopped. And when it will come to the second condition, if the first condition is not true or it returns false and then it comes to the second condition. So if the second condition is true, then it will print B is the largest number. Even if the second condition is not true, then finally comes to the else block. So if first condition checks whether A is greater or not, if it is not, then second condition will check B is greater or not. If not, then obviously C is a greater. So because it has only we have a three numbers. So at the else part, so here we don't need to put any other condition. So directly you can write else block and here you can say C is largest. So this is how we need to write the logic. So first we need to frame the logic and then we need to think about how we can put that logic into programmatic way by using conditional statements. So this is called as a nested if else statement. So we can have multiple if conditions, else if, else if. We can write multiple if else conditions, okay? So I'll show you one more example. Clearly we can understand. So let me just run this uh, program and now we can say C is largest number. So C is 30, so it is saving C is largest number. Suppose I'll make A is 50. Now A should be largest. So run this. We'll say A is largest number. Suppose I'll say B is 100. Now it should say B is largest number. So according to the logic, it will check the conditions and uh, if the first condition is true and then say A is largest number, if the second condition is true, say B is largest and if, if none of the conditions are not true, finally else block will execute, it says C is the largest number. So this is how we need to write uh, this is how we need to use if else condition statement. So if you want to execute set of statements based upon certain condition, we can execute it. Okay, or else else block will execute. So this is all about if else condition. I will also show you one more example for if else condition. So my problem statement is, so take uh, or I'll just give some input as weak number. Okay, input is a weak number. And uh, accordingly, I need to print the name of the week. So for example, when I say one, the program should print Sunday. When I say two, the program should print Monday. So like this, I want to verify one to seven weeks. So I will just give some number between one to seven, and then it will give you the name of the week. Input a week number, then print name of the week, name of the week. So here I will use nested if else statement. Nested if else statement, just like a previous example. Multiple if conditions we require. Okay, let's see how we can do this. Let's go to another class. Right click, new class. And here I'm just going to demonstrate nested if else. Okay, nested if else. So if you have more number of conditions, how we can handle nested if else. Take the main method, then finish it. So first of all, I need to have a number, weak number. Let's create a number variable, integer. Okay, so here I can just create a day. Okay, let's say day is equal to something called, for now just I'm putting only one. So I can just take one to seven numbers. If I provide as input like other than one to seven, it should say invalid weak number. Okay, that should also I need to validate. Now let us see. So when I pass a number, it should give a weak number. So how we can write multiple conditions here? So the first condition will be if, if day is equal to one, then I should print system dot out dot print and then, okay, Sunday. If the day is equal to one, and then I'll print Sunday. Okay, this is the first condition. If the day is equal to not one, so then I'll put one more condition. Else, if, again, day is equal to two. Okay, again, you can put system dot out dot print ln. Print ln, and here I can say Monday. Okay, so like this we can add one to seven all the conditions day equal to one it is sunday if the condition is false then it will come to the next level 
and the day is equal to 2. Even if this condition is not true, then it will come to the another condition. So else if day 3. And similarly, else if day 4. And else if day 5, day 6 and day 7. Okay, so now we covered all the weak numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Suppose if I given some different number other than 1 to 7, if I give 10 or 15 something, so none of the condition is not matched. Then finally, I will print invalid weak number. System dot out dot print ln. Here I'll just print invalid weak number. So this should also we should have handle invalid weak number. That's it. So now here I have created multiple conditions here. But how this will internally execute is first it will start from the first condition. If the first condition is true, it will print this message, then it will exit. It will ignore the rest of the conditions. And if the first condition is not matched or first condition is returns false, then it comes to the second condition and it will match, then execute it and it will come out. Even if the second condition is not matched, then it will go to the next level. So what we understood here is between 1 to 7, wherever the condition is matched, it will execute that particular statement and it immediately exit from the conditions. It will not uh, execute the rest of the conditions. Okay, but when this else block will execute, if the none of the conditions are not true between 1 to 7, then finally else block will execute. So here we no need to put any other conditions. So this is called as a nest, nested if else condition. So we can have multiple conditions like this. Okay, so in the previous example, what we have seen is this is also a nested if else statement, but we have put multiple conditions in single if statement. So this is one condition, this is another condition, including logical operators. But in this example, every condition is different. Every condition we have split it into multiple if conditions. Okay, so this is actually nested if else statement. Now let us execute and see. So for now I'm just passing only one and uh, run as a Java application. Now I can say something. So perfectly right. And when I say seven here, and then only this particular condition will be matched and it should say Saturday. Okay, so Saturday. And when I say some invalid number, 10, so none of the condition is not true, then finally else block will execute. Now run as Java application, now it's a invalid weak number. So this is how we need to write nested if else statement. If you want to validate multiple conditions. Okay, very, very useful. Now, so we have so far discussed if else condition and nested if else condition. If you have multiple if condition, how we can handle it. So the next one we have is switch case statement. So this is also comes under conditional statements or selection statements. So when we need to go for switch case statement, if you have else if else condition, then why we need switch case statement? So sometimes what happens is here, let's say this example. Here we have n number of conditions, right? So if you have four or five conditions, it nested if else condition is fine. We can use it. Suppose we have a 30 statement, 30 conditions or 100 conditions we have. Then if I start writing your if else condition like this, it will be very huge. So program is very become program will become very, very huge and uh, you have to write a lot of lines of code. It will increase the code basically. Okay, so in real projects, in the real time situations, we, sh we should avoid the, uh, we should avoid the more number of lines. So we have to achieve the task with the minimal number of lines or minimum code. So that is the standard we have to maintain. So if you have n number of conditions like this, like 10, 20, 30 conditions, instead of using nested if else statement, we can just go for switch case statement. So that will reduce your code. The same logic, same thing we can implement by using switch case statement. It will reduce your code basically. Okay. So now I'll show you how much code it is reduced. So if I create the same logic by using switch case statement, let's see how much code is reduced. So when I use nested if else statement, almost it is taken 40 plus lines, right? So same logic if I implement by using switch case statement, let's see how we can how many lines we can reduce the code. So let me just introduce switch case statement. So the next conditional statement is switch case. 
So the syntax of switch case statement will be like this. First, we need to use switch keyword. And here we need to put the variable. And uh, inside this switch block, we need to write multiple cases. Let's say case one and then statements. And case two and then another set of statements. Okay, and uh, so on. So we can write any number of cases. Finally, default block should be executed. It is just like an else block. Okay, if the none of the cases are not matched, finally it will come to the default block. And for every case, after completion of the statement, we have to use a break statement. Break statement mandatorily required. I'll tell you why break statement is required. For the default block, we don't require the break statement. Okay, so this is a syntax of switch case statement. Now, I'm going to implement the same logic, whatever we have created of printing weak names. I'm going to implement the switch case statement with the same example. Now, let's see how we can implement. So, new class and here I'm taking switch case statement. Switch case demo. Take this main method finish all right so now i'm going to implement the same logic but this time i'm going to use switch case statement let's see how we can use switch case statement so i'm taking a number it's an integer day is equal to let's say one now i'm going to write the switch case it's very very simple so let's say switch this is a keyword switch and here we need to specify the variable. What is the variable we have used? Day is a variable. And inside this block, first we need to write the cases. Let's say case. Case is also a keyword. But so what does it mean is if the day value is one, then I need to execute this statement. System dot out dot println. I'll just print Sunday. Okay, this is a statement semicolon and in the next line or in the same line you can say break statement break is another keyword so i'll tell you why the break statement is required here so every case we have to print this message and immediately we have to use a break statement and uh, the semicolon is representing the end of the statement right so that's the reason we can also put this break statement on the same line because when i say semicolon the line is ended so that means uh, you can also write the another statement in the same line. Okay, it will consider as a two different lines. Or you can also write this big command in the next line. Or if you have multiple statements, you can also write multiple statements inside the block. Right, so the first condition is done. So now, suppose if the day value is not one, then case two. Case two. Means if the day value is two, then I will print system dot how dot print ln one day this is another condition and followed by break command similarly we need to also write three four five six till seven so case three four five six seven so for every case i printed proper week name and along with the break statement suppose if the day value is not matching with one to seven then default block will execute default colon and here i'll say system dot out dot print ln here invalid weak number invalid weak number here we don't require break statement so let me just execute this and show you run as java application now you can see i say one here so first case is matched so sunday is printed so when i say five here run as java application now thursday is printed so five case is thursday Similarly, when I say 10 here, and then none of the cases are not matched, finally print invalid weak number. So how this condition statement will execute? So first it will take this variable value, 10, and it will match with the all the numbers, one after another. So for example, first case one is matched, then I have printed this message. What this break command will do is, it will just stop checking other cases. Okay, as soon as the first condition is matched, I don't need to again check the rest of the conditions. If I don't use this break command, what happens is it will go and check the other conditions also. Okay, I don't require to that because the first condition itself is matched. I know 
rest of the conditions will not match anyway. So I just come out from this switch block so that I have to use break command. So if I don't use break command for every statement, it will check the condition even though the condition is true, then again it will go out to the next statement, it will check the rest of the statements. So to avoid that, I have to use a break statement after completion of each and every statement. Okay. And uh, default block, we don't require break because after default block, we don't have any more lines. This is the last condition, right? After this, we don't have any lines of code. So we don't require any break command here. But the rest of the cases, we require the break command because after this statement, we have few more statements also there. So to avoid the execution of those statements, we have to use a break command. Okay. So if the case one is true, then the statement executed printer Sunday and then immediately it is break means it is come out from the switch block. Similarly, every statement will execute. Okay. So this is called as switch case demo. So when I say something different number two, then it will print Monday. Okay. So if you see here, this program is almost completed within 20 lines, 20 plus. But if I same code, if I write by using nested if else, almost it's taken 40 plus lines, right? So that's a major advantage of switch case statement. So to reduce the code, if you have more number of conditions, you can just write multiple cases like this. One, two, three, four, like this. Okay. So this is how we need to use switch case statement.